All right, so um, time to start our next session on pandemic issues. Our first presentation um, is from um, from Hungary. I'm so sorry if I mispronounced your name, Gabor Ovix. Um, are you here? Are you ready? Yeah. Yes, I'm here. I'm ready, and it was a perfect pronunciation. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm glad. I'm glad. Thank you. So I try to share my screen. So can you see it and hear me? Yes. Yes, it's good. Okay. So. Uh, Welcome everybody. I would like to speak some special outlier treatment in seasonal adjustment for handling the effect of the COVID-19 as you can see. And uh, as you will see, the basic idea was told uh, in the previous session uh, because we was also try to play a little bit with the transitory change. So uh, I will talk about our results uh, from this uh, topic. So just to introduce ourselves a little bit, uh, me, my co-authors and me are from the methodology department from the Hungarian Central Statistical Office. And uh, in our office, the seasonal adjustment is partly uh, centralized, uh, which means that our responsibility are the mathematical statistical modeling part, but uh, we are working together uh, from the subject matter department uh, and where the experts has some special knowledge about their own time series, which is uh, extremely useful, for example, for the outlier treatment. Uh, with this technique, uh, we made around 100 time, uh, sorry, 1000 time series. Uh, we work with 1000 time series and we use uh, Stramosites methods and we're working in GDMetra Plus. Uh, and as it was also told in the previous section, we, mo we made uh, full model revisions yearly and uh, some kind of partial concurrent revision every data refresh. Uh, we use last outlier strategy, which means um, that we um, <clears throat> examine the uh, outliers from the last year that uh, they need to be changed or they need to be a new one or not uh, every time. So I think there is no so much new information for you in this slide, but uh, maybe it's uh, uh, good to see how we think about uh, the seasonal adjustment. So as I said, we use tremor seats methods where the tremor part is to build a time series uh, model where we can use uh, regressors. The regressors can handle the calendar effects and the outliers. And after, and, and we also have a Sharima model. Uh, and after it's done, then we knew the decomposition of the linear time series where we have a seasonal component, a trend component, and an irregular component. Then we put back the effect of the regress source, and then we will find our uh, final trend, irregular, and seasonal component. And as you can see, the transitory change will go uh, to the final irregular component uh, in this technique. So to understand, uh, the outliers, it is very important to ad understand the background. So I say a few words what happened during the pandemic in Hungary. So first of all, we, uh, we think that uh, the effect of the time series wasn't really depend on the strengths of the COVID. It uh, really uh, depend on the strengths of the uh, answers the government gives for this pandemic. So for example, in Hungary, the first wave wasn't so strong, but uh, there was a very strong lockdown, uh, which made a very strong effect 
on our time series. Uh, this lockdown started in the middle of March and it uh, was around July, the end was around July in uh, 2020. Uh, the second is, uh, was less strict and it started at the end of 2020. And before it ended, the third wave is started around February in 2021. And it's uh, ended officially in the 1st of July. Uh, in this uh, time, the lockdown was very limited uh, because of the vaccinations. And uh, it means it has a much less effect on our time series. And our idea was that these three uh, waves both have a short and a long-term effect on our time series. Just to say a very short uh, example that in the first wave, all the restaurants need to be closed, uh, but some of them never opened again. So it has a short effect where every uh, restaurant was closed and there was also a long-term effect because some of them never uh, opened again. So it means that uh, we try to find a solution where all these, all these uh, things have effect, not only to the irregular component, but also to the trend component. And just for the facts, there was a fourth wave. We started uh, at the end of 2021, but there was no strong effect on our data because there was no really any lockdown uh, in that period. So this is the outliers we typically use. There is no uh, really any surprise. We use the additive outlier, the transitory change and the level shift. And as it was uh, told before, uh, the parameter here is 0 0.7, uh, which is built in the uh, Demetra we use. And we try to change it because we find that theoretically this parameter can be anything between zero and one. And there is no really good reason as, or we don't find any real good reason why is it 0 0.7. And uh, as you can see in the figure, the smaller, this parameter value is, then the process returned to this initial level faster. So as you can hear the discussion at the end of the previous uh, session, if the parameter is very small, then uh, this regression is very, very similar to the additive outlier, which is uh, exactly goes back after one period. So, what we made that we don't really find any exact method to calculate the delta parameter. So we try to use some heuristic method, uh, but before uh, I told you or tell you how we do that, I, I would like to underline the fact that I said before that the transitory change is go to the irregular part or the irregular component of the time series, but it doesn't matter, it has no effect on the other component. Since if you can see uh, the equation, where is, there is the original data, the trend component, the seasonal component, and the irregular component, if you manipulate one of the components and the left-hand side doesn't change, some other component should be changed too. So it has effects, for example, on the trend. And that's what, what uh, we really used in our examples. So in other words, we manipulate the irregular component to find a better trend component uh, uh, for our time series. So what we do practically that we define regressors in Excel. So outside of the metra, we give the data parameter different values from uh, 0 0.1 to 0 0.9. We don't use every of them, um, but we try typically almost all of them. And uh, we do it in different time periods, which were uh, um, important to handle the effect of the COVID. And in GDMetra Plus, uh, we can use this 
called user defined variables. Uh, they are not only outliers, it can be anything. And it's important to tell the, the metra to which component would you like to put the results. And of course, we put it into the irregular component. So before we use uh, this outlier, we wait some months, at least three or four months. And typically we put additive outliers for every month uh, in these periods. And we examine these outliers before uh, we decide what kind of transitory change should we use. So then we are ready to understand our heuristic method uh, for this uh, finding this data parameter. So the first of all, we try to find a data parameter where um, the decreasing scale of the transitory change is very similar to what we see in the additive outlier values. Uh, we also try to find something where the automatic outlier detection doesn't find any other outliers soon after uh, where we put uh, this transitory change. Uh, we also uh, see the figures of the time series that uh, should be uh, nice. And um, of course, we also uh, pay attention about the test statistics of seasonal adjustment, which uh, should be good. So now we are ready to see our examples. So the first example, I try to show you uh, what happened if you use a simple transitory change with different uh, parameter and nothing else. So the model will be the same every time. And this happened uh, if you use the automatic detection outliers. So it put to a level shift into March and then additive outlier into April, which is in one case, it's good because it's something similar that it has an effect on the trend and also an effect on the irregular component, but um, it may be very uh, strict or, or uh, a bit uh, sharp uh, what goes to the uh, trend component. So one of the strategies we heard uh, that uh, put a lot of additive outlier after each other, but it means that there is no change on the trend component and everything goes into the uh, irregular component. And we think that is not really uh, what happened in uh, the real world. So this is what you can see if you use the original transitory change. Here, the automatic outlier detection uh, find one extra outlier, but we uh, don't put it into the model. And what we don't like in this figure that uh, during the downturn, as you can see, the uh, trend is increasing, which is well not something what we would like to see. But if we change the parameter from 0 0.7 to 0 0.5, then it changed and we got a much nicer uh, trend where it started to decrease uh, from uh, the beginning of the uh, pandemic. So this is another example, manufacture of transport equipment. And uh, I think in this example, I would like to show you that sometimes uh, changing this parameter help when the original transitory change gives us something very uh, ugly <laughs> solutions. So as you can see, the problem is a bit similar to what we have seen before, that uh, the trend is increasing during the downturn, but it's something much more uh, bigger that uh, we have seen before. Uh, if we change the outliers to additive outliers, uh, here, we only need to use four additive outliers next to each other, and then our trend is much nicer uh, than it was uh, in the previous uh, solution. And if we use 
an additive outlier and the transitory change uh, with a different parameter, it's also uh, give a very nice uh, solution for us. Here we can see a very small decreasing in the trend during the downturn, which I think is also something uh, that could be seen here. And we also have um, an explanation why this extra additive outlier is needed because uh, the lockdown was started at the middle of the March and April was the first month where uh, the four months was uh, a part of the lockdown. So this, lo uh, this downturn uh, happened in two months and not in one. So that's why we need an extra uh, additive outlier here. This was something that we use very often uh, in our time series. And um, this is my last example, just to show that uh, if there are more waves um, that have an effect uh, in our time series, then transitory change can give a good solution too. So this is public catering. Uh, so the restaurant was uh, restricted to open in the second and the third wave too. So it has an effect uh, in the first wave, but in this uh, example, there is an effect on the second wave too, the second and the third together. And uh, I think this W is uh, something that we would like to see uh, in this situation. And I also think that we find a quite nice uh, trend for uh, this situation. So conclusions and further research uh, that uh, I think that modifying the transitory change rate can be a good solution to handle the effect of the COVID. Uh, and it may be a good solution for other situations too, just we started to use uh, during the pandemic. Um, So we use it to find a proper trend component. However, the effect of the transitory change as a part of the irregular component. Uh, these solutions, as we see, has a bigger effect on the trend than on the seasonal adjustment component. There is also uh, some effect on the seasonal adjustment component, but much bigger on the trend. And, uh, the problem here, there is now still an exact method to estimate the parameter. So I, we're seeing that further developments are needed in this direction. Uh, I have read the uh, chat in the previous section that there are some ideas uh, about this. Uh, we hopefully uh, may try uh, this kind of uh, ideas to make more developments uh, in this direction. And uh, we have a, a conference peop, a paper where we write down uh, this kind of results because uh, one of my co-authors have a very similar presentation in the same topic in the Quality 2022 conference today. And uh, in this link, uh, you can find uh, our, uh, our paper. So that's what I would like to uh, tell you today. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.